If you're watching this video, you've just done the East Hour Tamua, but you don't really think it's gone that well. But I'm here to tell you that that is okay. As someone who studies engineering at Cambridge, I know many people that have got low East Hour Tamua scores and still got in. In fact, in this video, I've asked a couple of my friends who got relatively low scores in their East Hour Tamua to share their experience with the test, but also how they recovered, how they quickly bounced back from the test to then focus on interview prep. I'll be asking them how they personally felt after the test, how they recovered, and how they smashed their interview to secure their offer. One of my friends is a first year engineer at Cambridge who got a relatively mediocre ESAT score, and here is his story. I'll be reading out his reply on my laptop. After finishing the ESAT, I honestly didn't feel great. I felt quite unsure and disappointed with how I'd done. I was aiming for a top score, but during the test, especially in maths one, I realized things weren't going too well. I felt tense and I knew I was making mistakes. On the walk home, I felt pretty empty. That day, I just took a break. No work, nothing. Later, I went on Reddit to find out how other people had found it, and that really helped. I saw that most people were feeling the same, anxious, uncertain, and not too confident about their own performance. Knowing that around 95% of people felt similar made me feel less alone. Talking with friends also helped, since many of them felt the same way. Over time, I just tried not to think about the ESAT too much. I kept reminding myself that there was still a chance, however small, of getting an interview. And if I did, that would count for a lot. So I kept preparing as if I would get one. To prepare for the interview, I mainly focused on problem solving because I knew that was at the core of Cambridge Engineering interviews. I'd already been doing a bit of Isaac Physics throughout the year, but after the ESAT, I really stepped it up. You can actually track your activity on Isaac Physics, and mine peaked around October to November. One of my friends recommended Professor Powie's Perplexing Problems, and I also heard about it from a Cambridge engineering student, so I decided to get it. I didn't do every problem, not even close, but I worked through a good number of mechanics questions. I also used the I Want to Study Engineering website. Some of them were quite straightforward, but a few of them were surprisingly close to what I was actually asked in my interview, so I think it's a really valuable resource. Another one of my friends got into Cambridge to study economics who got a relatively low Tamu score, so here is his story as well. After the Tamua, I felt terrible. I found the 2024 paper way harder than previous years, and I'd done really badly. When I eventually got my score, I was devastated. I'd worked so hard for months, and seeing that score honestly broke me. I cried that day. I just felt like all my effort had gone to waste. But looking back now, I'm at Cambridge, and I realized that one test doesn't really define anything. It's important to understand that the Tamua, and ESAP for that matter, is mostly a filter. It helps Cambridge shortlist candidates but it doesn't solely decide who gets in. Once you're through to the interview, that's where you have the real chance to show what you can do. From what I've seen from speaking to professors and students, the interview is the most important part of your application. I know plenty of people who did below average on the Tamua, but still got offers because they performed really well in the interview. Overall, my advice would be to stop worrying about the Tamua. Even an average score is more than enough to get you an interview. What matters most now is your mindset. Stay motivated, work hard on interview style problems, and focus on showing your true ability when the time comes. I've seen it happen to so many people. They thought they'd mess up, but they ended up getting offers. So it's 100% possible. You just have to keep going, be consistent, and don't lose hope. One thing I did in my preparation for my interview, but wish I'd done more of, was contact people on LinkedIn for mock interviews. I tried it twice, and both times I got free sessions with Cambridge or Imperial students. If you're proactive, you can easily get many free practice interview sessions this way, which will make a huge difference to your final performance. Essentially, if you do really well on the interview, it can pretty much compensate for your whole application. The ESA and Timua are over. You can't change your score. But what you can do, and what the best thing you should do is to focus on interview prep. For all the engineering guys out there, my best advice would be to use Isaac Physics and IWantToStudyEngineering.com and a couple of other sources. I'll be creating much more detailed interview guidance videos later on, where I'll go into the specifics of how to actually prepare and smash the interview, but only if there's sufficient interest. So if you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments below. For the final words, you are not alone if you feel like you didn't do well on the admissions test. And the point of this video was to say that it sort of doesn't matter. There are tons of people that get into Cambridge without having stellar admission test scores. So don't worry, focus on the other part of your application and best of luck, I'll be rooting for you.